Jesus, he said in Revelation, I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. Amen. The horrors of hell were experienced on the cross that day when Jesus was crucified. He went through all the suffering that a man could go through. For the first three hours on the cross, we know that from nine until noon that Jesus, he experienced the wrath of the man and men around the Roman soldiers, the, the Jews standing round about, they, they did anything that they could to the Lord Jesus Christ. We know uh, that they beat him, they spit upon him, they scourged him, they mocked him, they bowed the knee before him, they planted a crown upon his head. They said, well, if he's a king, does he not deserve a crown? And they took the crown of thorns and planted it down upon his brow. And for the first three hours, Jesus went through every kind of torment and punishment that man could offer to him. And so we understand that through the reading of the scriptures that Christ, he spent six hours on the cross. We know that at midday, the, 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 the earth became dark is what the Bible tells us. There was a, a total eclipse at, at noon which is an impossible thing to happen, but not with God. Amen. On this day, Jesus, he uh, suffered the wrath of an almighty God. And for the first three hours, he suffered everything that man could do unto him. Uh, but for the last three hours on the cross of Calvary, God poured out his wrath upon his son. And Jesus was completely forsaken uh, by his father until the debt was paid in full. And I think about the wrath that he uh, partook of that day, the wrath uh, that was poured out upon Jesus Christ that day, that Lamb of God, that darling Son. And, but I think about the, the scripture that he tells us in Revelation. He says, I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. And so we know that there was no fight that took place, but he willingly went and took the keys of hell out of the devil's hand, and he conquered death, hell, and the grave. Aren't you glad uh, for that? But in John chapter number 20, uh, when we get there, we find that they have came to the tomb. They have uh, came to anoint his body with oil and spices, and they, uh, have bring, uh, they brought many things uh, to anoint his body with, and they are mourning over the death of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, but as I mentioned earlier in the sunrise message this morning, uh, when they got to the tomb, they found an empty tomb. Amen. But we don't serve an empty tomb. We serve a risen Savior today. Amen. Uh, I don't have hope in an empty tomb, uh, but I do have hope in a risen Savior. Aren't you glad uh, that Jesus is alive and well? He is still uh, on the throne today, and I'm glad that he's there uh, uh, to make intercession for us. Amen. Uh, the, the veil of the temple uh, was rent in twain from the top to the bottom uh, after he uh, declared it is finished and after uh, he gave up the ghost we know that that veil uh, it was rent in twain and we know that it was ripped uh, from the top to the bottom and that's symbolic amen uh, that the veil uh, the covering the, the thing that kept man out of the holy of holies the thing that kept man uh, out of having communion with God and ha out of uh, having fellowship with God was ripped when Jesus uh, died on the cross and said it is finished amen and now we have access to God uh, through the Lord Jesus Christ we can boldly approach the throne of grace today uh, because of what Christ has done on the cross of Calvary. Amen. 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 I feel like preaching this morning. I don't feel too good. I've been coughing all week. I've had a lingering cough for some time, uh, but I do feel like preaching for just a little while. Amen. I appreciate the word of God, and I'm glad that we serve a risen Savior today. I'm glad that we have a hope uh, beyond this world, and amen, if we just had a hope in this world, uh, we'd be of all men most miserable, is what the Apostle Paul said, uh, but I'm glad that we have a hope beyond this world. And the Apostle Paul, he said, I'm in a strait betwixt two, uh, having a desire to depart and to be with Christ, uh, which is far better than this world. Amen. And certainly to be with Christ, it's far better. I thought about all the people this week that may have lost their life. I thought about uh, the, the young girl that lost her life in Belmont. She, uh, she uh, closed her eyes in death in this world, amen. Uh, but she's with the Heavenly Father today and he's taking care of her over in heaven and she's far better off than we are today and, and I wish to God that we could join her in heaven and, and I, I long for the, uh, for the day when I can go to heaven, amen. And the prayer that we ought to pray is what we read in the book of Revelation. He said, even so, uh, come Lord Jesus quickly, amen. And that's the prayer that every believer ought to be praying today is to come, Lord Jesus, quickly. 
And you see the shape that this world's in today, the shape our economy's in, the shape our government's in, the shape the world's in with all the wars going on and all the rumors of wars. And I think about all the sodomites in this day and time and all the abortions taking place in this day and time and all the sinful things that are taking place uh, that used to people was ashamed of, amen, uh, that they're doing it openly today. And, and it seems as if Christians have just hushed up about it. We don't really say uh, much about anything anymore. Uh, but I've seen the shape that this world's getting in. And as 2 Timothy says uh, in, in chapter number 3, this know also that in the last days perilous times shall come we are living in perilous times today and so I'm praying Lord Jesus come quickly I'm praying for his return uh, but amen we wouldn't have any hope in the return the second time if he hadn't came the first time amen we wouldn't have any hope in that second return if he hadn't resurrected from the dead and I'm thankful uh, that when the, the, the Simon Peter and, and the other disciple they come to the grave here I want you to notice what they found on this third day this third day they come to the grave. They was expecting to see the Lord Jesus Christ. First of all, I want to mention that, and I mentioned this earlier today, but Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus, they took the body of Christ, and they, Joseph of Arimathea, he was a member of the Sanhedrin. He was, he was a member uh, of the, pretty much the, the Jewish Supreme Court, and, and he, was, um, he was wanting, and he begged for the body of Jesus Christ after Christ had died. And, and the reason being, if, if a man was crucified, they would typically leave that man up for three days after he was crucified on the cross. And what would happen would be the vultures would come by and they would pick the flesh off of these uh, humans that had been crucified. Uh, but Joseph of Arimathea, he begged for the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we understand today that he, not only did he beg for the body, but Nicodemus was with him. And I, I believe that's a sign right there that Nicodemus went on to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, he went on to have faith because he cared about the life of Christ. And I think about today uh, uh, how when, when once Christ died, they took up his body and they, they wound it in linen, in, in the linen clothes. And the Bible talks about how uh, er, Joseph of Arimathea, he went and he bought some linen. He was a very rich man, but he wound the Lord Jesus in linen clothes. And when they, when Simon Peter and the Apostle John come here to Joseph's tomb, this borrowed tomb, if you'd have it, they find that the linen clothes are lying in the tomb, but there is no Savior. And we know in the previous chapter, well, excuse me, it's actually in Matthew's account. Uh, they, they. They're making sure, Pilate, he's saying, you know, we, we know what the Lord said after three days I'll rise again. He said, Pilate said, go, go your way. He said, you have a watch. He said, set a watch by the sepulcher and make sure that that stone is sealed and make sure that nobody comes and steals the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. They was, they was saying here, do you not understand, Pilate, if... if if he's risen from the dead or if somebody steals his body to even say he's risen from the dead, they said, the last error shall be worse than the first. And the Jews had already made a lot of mistakes at this point in time, but if, if Christ's body was not found on that third day, then they would be in a heap of trouble. And, and later on they would lie about it. They would say somebody stole his body away. But when Simon Peter and the Apostle John, on the third day when they get to the tomb, they look down and they see the linen clothes lying and then they see a napkin that was about his head. I want you to notice the linen clothes and how they was lying there and uh, the preparation that they took or the care that they took of the Lord's body. But also they, the, the Bible speaks of a napkin in verse number 7. It says, And the napkin that was about his head, not lying with the linen clothes, but wrapped together in a place by itself. I don't know how many of you are Bible students and you read about Jewish history and the things that uh, they believed, but in that day and time, Jewish people, they believed that if you were sitting at a table having a meal, then after you were done eating, you would take the napkin and you would wad it up and you'd throw it on your plate and you'd get up and you'd leave. That was the custom. If a man sat down to eat and he took the napkin and laid it in his lap as you're supposed to do. I'm not, I'm not proper with my etiquette when I go out to eat. I don't know how many of you are. But I think about when, when in this day and time, if you sit down to eat a meal, if for some reason you have to get up and walk outside, or if you're going to talk to somebody in the middle of a meal, you're supposed to take the napkin and you're supposed to fold it. 
and you're supposed to lay it on the table. That way if a waitress or a waiter comes by, they see you're not finished and they see that you're coming back. Well, that's what this is a picture of here. When you see the napkin that is laid aside by itself, it's wrapped together in a place by itself. It's symbolic meaning that Jesus got up and he's went away, uh, but he's got a message for the people. He says, I'm coming back, amen, and I'm glad that certainly he did come back. And one day, after a while, he will come back again and receive us unto himself that where he is, there we may be also. I'm glad today that we have the promise that he will return once again one day. Can you imagine living in the Old Testament days looking forward to the Messiah, looking forward to that, uh, that one to come, that Jesus that you hear about? They, they say there's going to be a Son of God to come one day after a while. And all the Old Testament prophets, the major and minor prophets, they heard about the Lord Jesus Christ and how one day he would come, but they never did see the day of his coming, amen. But because of faith, they had faith that one day he would come. And, and, and the people in the New Testament, uh, the, they saw the Lord's life and they saw uh, his burial, his death, his resurrection, and, and they had something to look back to. They had the cross to look back to. They had the empty tomb to look back to. And it was easier for them to have faith. But when you read about the heroes of faith in Hebrews chapter 11, it's all people in the Old Testament because they had to have faith without seeing. Amen. And, and we're in the same boat today. Although we have history books to look at and we have the Word of God that we can read and we can meditate on and we know that Jesus has done came the first time and that He was dead, He was buried, and He resurrected that third glorious morning, we have to have faith. With the eye of faith, we've got to look forward and we may not be able to see the, in our lifetime the Lord coming back, but with the eye of faith, we have to believe that He will come back. And you have to have faith today. Amen. The disciples... And the women that come to the tomb, they were astonished to not find him there. It seems as if they, uh, they were expecting him to be there. Jesus had prophesied many a times. He said, three days and three nights in the heart of the earth shall be, and the third day I shall rise again. And he had told them that, but the Bible said they understood not the things that he said. But on this day, the Bible says that the two, the two disciples they came by, they saw that the napkin was laid again in a place by itself. They knew what that meant. They knew what Jewish custom meant. When, when they saw a napkin that was folded, they knew that that meant something special and of importance. But after they leave, the Bible says Mary stood without at the sepulcher weeping. And as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the sepulcher and saith the two angels, one sitting at the head of where Jesus had laid, one sitting at the feet where Jesus had laid. And then the Bible says she turned around and she saw Jesus. And here, she supposed him to have been the gardener. This is the same Mary who he had cast the devils out of. She'd seen Christ before. She had seen the face of Jesus Christ before, and she had walked with him, she had talked with him. And she supposed him to have been the gardener. And he said, Woman, why weepest thou? And then he asked the question, Whom seekest thou? She said, sir, if you, if you have borne him hence, saying, what she's saying here is if you know where the Lord Jesus is, would you tell, him, tell me where he's at so I can go and retrieve his body and take him away? The Bible says in verse 16, Jesus saith unto her, I want you to notice this right here. If you don't catch anything else today, I want you to notice this right here. When she supposed him to have been the gardener, then she, she says, Lord, if you, or she says, if, if you know where the Lord's body is at, will you tell me so I can take him away privately and where I can anoint his body? Verse 16, the Bible says, Jesus saith unto her, Mary. When he called her name, then she realized who he was. And I am reminded about the night that I got saved. I knew I was a sinner, but that night, in specific, Jesus called my name, and he, he revealed to me my sin. He said, Micah, you are a sinner, and you've offended me. And, and, and I understand when I was lost, you don't really realize what all's occurring, and when you get saved, you don't really realize what all Jesus has in store for the believer. You just think that he's saving you from your sins, and he's saving you from a place called hell. 
There's a lot more in salvation than just that, amen. He certainly does bless the believer, amen. But when Jesus said unto her, Mary, the Bible says she turned herself and saith unto him, Rabboni, which is to say master. And so when she called his name, then she realized who she's talking to, amen. Uh, she realized that he was the master. And aren't you glad uh, today that Jesus is the master? He's Lord. Uh, he's the master of the sea, Sister Kel. Uh, the song that we sing, I'm glad uh, that when the waves are over our head, they're under his feet. I'm glad uh, that when the disciples when they were on the ship that night and they saw the storm coming their way uh, they, they said you know Lord can you not come help us but when he came up to the top of the ship and he rebuked the storm and said peace be still then they said what manner of man is this even the winds and the seas obey him they knew who to go to in time of trouble but once he come to help them they didn't have faith that he could do anything but she here she saw the Lord and he called her name and she said master I'm thankful today for the third day, aren't you? I'm glad that we can rejoice today because of the third day. The third day has a lot of meaning in the scriptures. In the book of Genesis chapter number 1, you read about the third day. And how the third day that, that uh, there was life that began to bud in the plants and then the herb yielding fruit, we understand that that's a picture of life on the third day. You know how it is when spring rolls around. You, you have the winter months and everything looks dead as a doornail. But come springtime, after a few warm days and after a, uh, a few showers, you see trees starting to bud. You see flowers starting to bloom. And what a picture of the resurrection. Amen. Resurrection day, the third day, it's a wonderful day to me. And everybody here today looks nice. You're all dressed up. You have pretty colors on, and everybody seems to dress their best on Easter. But Jesus, he gives us our best. We ought, to give him our best. we ought to give him our best all the time, amen? He gives us his best, and so we ought to give him our best. And, I, and I, I always try to go by that mindset. But I think about how that we've come here today, and it's a, it's a day of, of color. It's a day where that everybody's wearing different pretty colors, and, and you, you, you see everybody, they're wearing their best outfit. They... All you ladies, you try to find the prettiest dress you can find for Easter Sunday. And, 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 and I, I know uh, that people, they, they, they list this day a lot more important than other days. But for the child of God, every Sunday is a, a day where we can celebrate the resurrection. But I, I understand the reason for wanting to be colorful on this day. It's such a beautiful day. I believe 2,022 years ago, if the calendar's accurate, I do believe that that morning the sun did shine. I mean, I don't believe the rain was a blowing that day. I believe the sun was a shining. I don't think there was a cloud in the sky when Jesus walked out of that tomb. And, and I'm thankful today for that. But three, uh, three days prior to that on the cross of Calvary, one of the darkest days in all of history, the darkest day in all of history, let me correct that right there, the darkest day in all of history was at Calvary, amen. But the brightest day in the world was the day of the resurrection. And I'm thankful for that today. The third day. Genesis, you read about that, of the, the plants that brought forth fruit. But then you also read about, in, in the book of Genesis, you read about, um, in chapter number 22, how Abraham, he carried up his son Isaac to Mount Moriah to offer him up as a sacrifice. And on, it says, on the third day, he went up to the mount to present Isaac as that sacrifice. But that's when he saw the lamb caught in the, or the ram caught in the thicket by his horns. Amen. And I, I'm thankful today that Jesus provided him, God provided himself a lamb, and that lamb is the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and there's a lot of pictures in the Old Testament about that third day, and it's a picture, it's symbolic of a resurrection to come, amen. This is the resurrection. Jesus told Martha and Mary, he said, I am the resurrection and the life. Any man that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And I understand in the previous chapters, he said, I am the bread of life, I am the living water, I am the true vine. But let me tell you something today, he wouldn't have been any of those without being the resurrection, amen. He had to be the resurrection in order for him to be our Savior today. He had to be the resurrection today in order for him to be the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, amen. And the first and the last, the Prince of Peace, uh, from everlasting to everlasting, he had to be the resurrection. And on this day, he was the resurrection. The Bible says that they, they went away and they told all the disciples about the Lord's resurrection that took place. And then in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, you can read it for yourself, how he was 
He went to the cross of Calvary according to the scriptures. He died, he was buried, he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And this is the, the phrase according to the scriptures is referring to scripture that is recorded before the resurrection ever took place. All the prophesying that took place, the, the prophesying that was penned down by great men of God in the word of God, they was telling about the Lord's resurrection. And on this day, some 2,000 years ago, Jesus came forth out of that grave. I believe he just busted through that stone, amen. I believe he just pushed it out of his way. It wasn't even, it, it wasn't hard for him to move. He was 100% God and 100% man. But he went through all the physical, uh, the, the physical ailments that we can possibly go through on Calvary that day. But praise the Lord, he was 100% God and he was able to come victorious over death, hell, and the grave. Aren't you thankful for that today? I, I'm, I'm rejoicing today because I have victory in the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul said, thanks be to God which giveth us the victory. The song we said, because he lives. The song we sung earlier, the second verse of that song. It says, how sweet to hold a newborn baby and feel the pride and joy he gives. But greater still, the calm assurance that this child can face uncertain days because he lives. We have hope beyond this world because he lives. This young girl right here, my daughter, I'm thankful for her. And I appreciate her and what she's meant to me. But when she was born, the night she was born, and, and the first time we laid her in that bassinet, I, I, I looked over in that bassinet and I just began to weep and I began to think about the days ahead that she would have to face. And, and if, if, if daddy's not around or if mama's not around, all the days that she'll have to face without us, and I understand how hard life is right now and I, I know how hard life's going to be in the future, but because the same God uh, that, that's watching over her is watching over me, she's going to be all right, amen? And, and I'm not going to have to worry if something were to happen to me or if something were to happen to me and my wife, this young girl will be taken care of by the almighty God of heaven, amen? Because he watches over his own. She's not going to get saved today because daddy's a preacher. She's going to get saved because she puts her faith and, and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. She's going to get saved because she repents of her sins. And anybody under the sound of my voice, if you don't repent of your sins and put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, I can offer you no hope beyond this world. Amen. But if you're saved today, you have a hope beyond this world. You have a blessed hope. The Bible describes it as a lively hope beyond this world. I'm glad that we have the hope of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm not trying to get off topic today, but Tuesday night I started something new in my ministry. I went to the Franklin County Jail and I preached to all the inmates. I went from pod to pod. You went to the max pod. You went to the, the seg pod. You went to the men pod. All the different types of crimes were in that jail cell. And, and when you step in a cell and the officer says, well, there's a button right here by the door. If you need me for anything, you just press that button and I can be here in 30 seconds. I'm sitting here thinking I can be killed in under 30 seconds. And, and, and when he walks out behind me and that door shuts, that big steel metal door shuts behind me, and there I am with 15 to 20 inmates who've committed all sorts of crimes, and they're all just staring at me. And I, what I, but I felt a peace of God that come over me. And I said, you know what? The Lord's put this on my heart. So he's going to take care of me. And as I opened up the scripture to him, I said, I don't know what y'all have done. I know some of you what you've done and why you're here, but that's not my concern. As I opened up the word of God, he didn't give me a spirit of fear, but of peace and of love and of a sound mind. And I began to preach the word of God to those men and I began to tell them about no matter what they've done in this life, no matter what kind of sin they've committed in this life, there's a God in heaven who still loves them today, amen? It doesn't matter how far out in left field they've got. I said the, the fact of the matter is, no matter what you've done, if you don't put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, you'll perish in a place called hell. I said there's people today that sit on the church pews their entire life and don't put their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And there's church members today that will die and go to that awful place called hell. Let me tell you something. I told him, I said, just because I'm on the other side of the bars doesn't mean I'm any better of a person. In the eyes of God, we're all sinners. And when God looks at us, he's looking for one thing, and that's the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. 
but, but Jesus' blood would not have been worth anything had it not been for that third day, amen. But praise God, the third day he got up out of that tomb and he walked and he began to walk into Galilee and, and he, was, he appeared before 500 men at once and he began to tell them how he's about to go away after 40 days. But then in, in, the, in the same manner as he went up into heaven, one day after a while he'll come back that same way. He'll come back on a cloud one day to receive us as his own, amen. But I'm asking you today, I know it's Easter Sunday. What better kind of a Sunday to get saved by the grace of God than on Easter Sunday? You say, preacher, I've got, di I've got dinner plans after this. Well, the dinner can wait as far as I'm concerned. So your, your soul is more important to me than eating a meal after this, amen. I certainly believe if you don't know the Lord as your personal Savior, today would be a great day to come to know Him. Sister Kelly, if you would make your way to the piano today, I'm about finished. And I appreciate everybody today for coming out to the Lord's house. I appreciate you listening to me. But I want you to understand something today. I preach what I do, not because it's Easter. I preach it because there is a hope beyond this world, and I love you, and I want you to know that there's somebody there that cares about you. And you say, Preacher, I don't know you all that well. Let me tell you, I still care about your soul, and your soul will spend eternity in one of two places today, either in heaven or in hell. We was in the cemetery yesterday over at Bethlehem, and uh, where my daddy's the pastor, and we was looking at all my great-grandparents and all them and some people from the Civil War that had fought in the Civil War and privates that had fought out in the Civil War. And the, I mean, some, some graves in that cemetery are so old. They, th those men were, were almost here before the founding of this country. I mean, we, we found somebody born back in like 1792. And, and I think about how, how amazing that is that we have history to show us that. But I, I also thought about this. We was talking how when somebody is buried, their feet are pointing the east. Amen. That's exactly right. Do you know why they're, they're pointing the east? Because when the Lord calls us home, those that are saved will be called up and they will be facing the east. Amen. We'll be called to meet the Lord together in the air. And, and so that, that's a very important thing. When somebody is buried, their feet ought to be pointing the east. Amen. But if you ain't saved, it really don't matter which way your feet are pointing. Because you ain't going to go to heaven. But I want you to know today that you've got a preacher down here at Friendship that cares about you and wants to tell you about the Lord. And if you don't have a home church, I want, I want to invite you back. If you're lost without God and you need somebody to talk to, I can give you my number. You can call me. I'll pray with you any hour of the day. Any hour of the night, I want to be there for you. But I want you to know that Jesus died for your sins, and not for your sins only, but for the sins of the whole world. Everybody stand today. Wood. We're going to sing a song of invitation. If you need to come pray today, if you want to just thank the Lord for rising again that third glorious morning, you come ahead right at this time.